Well, I just wanted to, as I always like to say, um, thank you for joining me today, this evening. And I'll begin this episode just like I begin all episodes here at Aaron's Opinion by asking only one question. Who is Marco Gallo? Go right ahead. Well, I am, uh, I don't know how to answer that question, how, who I am, but I am, uh, my name is Marco Gallo. I am uh, 35 from New York State. Um, you know, I used to live down there, but I'm upstate. So um, I, uh, I'm single, love everything to do with cars and uh, fitness related stuff. That's me in a nutshell. Okay. All right. All right. Now, Marco, how did we come across each other around the, uh, the blindness community and probably by the, from one of the groups, I don't remember. Probably so, probably so. And by by the, by the way, so well, my name, as you know, is Aaron Richmond. I'm 30 years old. I have glaucoma, <laughs> and I have a congenital heart defect. And I was wondering if you could tell me about your blindness, if you want. Have you? Uh, were you born blind? You know, that's one thing I left out of what I just was talking about. But I was born um, prematurely at six and a half months, I think it was. Mm, and I have the uh, eye condition called ROP. Okay. So can you remind the listener what that is? It's retinopathy of prematurity. It's from just from being born premature. And they have to give, you know, too much oxygen to keep you alive. So it's either your eyes or if they didn't, wasn't that, it could have been worse. So I'm thankful that it was just my eyes. Sure, sure. You know, this used to be a pretty significant problem for the older generations. Yes. Um, it was very, very common in the 1950s and 60s and 70s. It was an extremely, That's what I was told. Like, in a very common problem until they figured out how to use the, inc- the, uh, inc- the incubator. I think that's, yeah, I'm pretty I sure think that's so, the yeah. word. I think yeah, that's I think the that's word. I, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to blurt that word out. I think that's the word for it. Um, they yeah. needed to learn how to use that technology properly. And so now um, it still is a problem today, but less, um, hopefully. It's probably less than even when I was born, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, it, it um, was. It would have been It would have been less. You uh, would have been born around, uh, what, 86? 86? At the end of 86. Cause, right. Um, it was supposed to be 87, but it was 86, yeah. December. December 11th. Oh, that's interesting that you're yeah. supposed to be in 87, but you're... Yeah, so it's March, I believe. March something, I forget the okay. exact date. But... That's interesting. And so what is your birthday? It's December 11th, uh, 1986. Okay. Well, good to know. Now, Marco, how are you... Um, so, you know, another big thing that I'd like to talk about here on the channel is some of the you know, different types of experiences you had while going, while growing up. So can you Mm -hmm. tell, can you tell us about some experiences, maybe some funny things or interesting things or philosophical things, you know, that happened to you while growing up that really made you the, you know, who you are today? What do you think? Um, let's try to think of some experiences. I mean, I, when I, growing up, I had, um, you know, help in school with like, with you know, I was more an auditory, I still am, like listener to learn. Mm-hmm. Right. So I still do that. Sure. But I had, you know, they would read the textbook to me, the lessons, and I would answer, you know, I would listen in class and I would learn, you know, answer what whatever it had to be done right. that way primarily. So, I mean, you, you come across, you know, a lot of people were, even like today, and you know for probably yourself, so a lot of people are hesitant to come up to you and even just talk to you, they're like scared. I, I noticed that. Like they, they don't once they find they don't know how to act. I'm like, it's not that serious. Come and ask. Some people will. I'm like, that's all you gotta do. It's not that serious. I'm comfortable with my. It is what it is. Right. You know. Right. Well, I think it's good. It's. I thank you for saying so because these are the types of things that to us as two successful blind people, you know, these are the things that are not issues for us in our minds. Right, but they are issues for other people, and I've yes. I have experienced this as well. Oh, there are I'm sure. many, sure, sure. There are many problems when it comes to, you know, people not knowing or fully understanding um, how to, you know, interact appropriately. This is a very consistent problem that I am seeing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm noticing that now with like my neighbors; they know. 
and they'll, they're, they're nice and all, but they're my new neighbors. I've only been here since September, but they, you know, you could tell they're kind of hesitant. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's really not that serious to me, right. at least. <laughs> right, right. I, I yeah. see. I see. Well, you know, for, for a neighbor, you know, that, that can be, you know, neighbors are, are awkward at times or at best. Yes. And then, and then with the disability thing, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying, but then I can also understand at some level where and why and what? how they would feel a sense of hesitation. You know, I mean, I'm yes. a pretty, I mean, I'm a pretty private guy. I'm, a, I'm actually, and it's, it's, it's a joke. It's an irony because I'm a YouTuber, or a podcaster. All right, I was going to say, wait, <laughs> but, but actually I'm, I'm a private person in that outside of my work and, and content creation. Gotcha. I don't directly interact with many people outside of my immediate family. Gotcha. So you can be a very private person in reality and have yes. and have a a product that you produce publicly. That's how yes. many, many people are. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So so Marco then, um, so what happened, you know, after you graduated high school and things like that? Uh, when I after I graduated high school in two thousand five, it was in June. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so it's been a while now. So then after that, I worked at um, I didn't go to college, so I worked at a supermarket. I think it was a year in between high, graduating high school and about a year, probably. So I worked in a supermarket for like three and a half years. You know, I just took I said, something for me to do. I want to be around people. Sure. Great. You know, bagging groceries, but I got to talk to so many people. It was you know, like get to know good. you. So it was, I loved it because I'm, I'm the opposite. I love just being around people. Any <laughs> time I, talking with them about anything, I don't care <laughs> what it is. So, <laughs> you know. So you're 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 kind you're kind of flagging me as someone who's antisocial. You know. But... <laughs> oh, I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> you're just, not your thing. You know, it's not... <laughs> so no, you would, no, no, no. So you would, you you would call it that. You just don't want it to be my thing. You would secretly call it that. <laughs> I, I guess secretly, yeah. But you know, that's okay. Not everyone is, is like me. Which is that's cool too. Uh, that's you're, so, you you're a char- <laughs> you're a character in the podcast. I can already tell. How many other podcasts have you been on? You have a you have a podcast personality. I um a while back, there's a guy who does um. He's based out of Colombia. I don't know if you know him. Alvaro Alvarito. I haven't talked no, to him in a while. But I did a no, podcast with him. Oh no. You Last see, year, the year before. It's been a little while. The, you see the beauty, the beauty of podcasting is that we build a glo- a universal community of all the countries all over the world. People people listen and participate. Well, let's talk about let's n- not let's talk about him offline. But I, I want to learn more yeah, we, about we him. Definitely. We, we definitely could uh yeah, yeah. But that's really that's really cool. Yeah, definitely with just the way you the way you talk, um, your beautiful you know your beautiful accent, your beautiful delivery. You should you should get into podcasting, man. But that's okay. what everyone tells me. They're like you should go to public speaking. I'm like, there's so many people doing it. What should I? But I don't well, want to the reason. You, but 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 you know what the reason is? What the mm-hmm. real reason is? is? You have that nice you know that nice kind of um, the only way I can put this is that kind of annoyingly sexy new york accent that's what everyone tells me from other states and I'm like, like that that you got you got that cool slick new york <laughs> you, you know you know you know you got you got your little yeah. your little new york accent you uh-huh. know that's you what know. i've been told many times no you do you do you do have you do have the have have, have the new yorker you know uh-huh. and that and that sounds good on a podcast that uh-huh. sounds really good on a podcast that new yorker do i sound i'm just curious because people have commented on it do I sound like a southerner to you? Do I sound southern? A little bit. No, yeah, like of course. Too much? Of course I would because I grew up in Maryland and now um, oh, I'm living in Florida. Okay. So, of course, it's very interesting as someone who's a language teacher to, to study this that everybody has some accent. So, obviously, if people, if I talk to someone up, up in your up in your neck of the woods, you know, <laughs> say, hey, man, you, say, you sound like a southerner. You're talking that southern English. But then <laughs> I've been so far south. That someone told me, are you from Boston? You're talking Boston. You sound like a Boston. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Wow. So it just depends on what part of the country you're from. But certain words right. you pick up on as, you know, as, uh, but, but anyway, so, you know, when you work in, in a grocery store, you know, that's mm-hmm. an important job 
because you're you're contributing to the community around you and you're hearing a lot of crazy stories a lot of funny stuff oh, happens so at a many grocery people, store. so many things you know what like what was the most cuz you know me I love to be serious but then I love to laugh on my podcast like what was the most hilarious thing that happened in your grocery store I mean you would think that you would think that people there would know I mean I walked around with the cane and you know cuz they but then it would be like some people get mad at me like I worked there and knew me like you don't know where it is I'm like no cuz you're moving the stuff around all the time I can't remember <laughs> of course where you're putting things and they, they didn't know what to say they're like oh yeah well you got a point there <laughs> you don't tell me I'm going to think it's somewhere well, else I'm going to ask let me just you. let me just tell you let me just tell you my my parents my mother god <laughs> g- 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 god help her she can't find she can't find anything in the, wow. she can't find anything in a damn store you know it's like but she spends more time walking back to something than she does actually buying it and leaving see so oh, wow so you aren't my point is it's not your imagination it's hard for sighted people too and, right, so and imagine you know, us and you know why they do it so you'll buy more stuff by accidentally walking around oh that's right yeah yeah probably right. they know what they're doing yeah <laughs> they know what they're doing so yeah. i mean so you know so that's why that's in my opinion that's probably why they do that to encourage you to buy oh, yeah. more things personally i i would marco i mean you worked in a store i've never worked in a store but marco do you think that people like honestly do buy more just because they had to walk around or does the walking around just make them angrier and then they actually buy less because they were distracted by walking around what like what, i think it like, makes them buy more i think it makes them buy more you think it's you think there is a correlation yeah. and they buy more oh yeah yeah oh yeah Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. around the holiday time was crazy. And I was there a few numerous times with that right before, like you know, the mad rush. Everyone was crazy buying everything. Yeah. Or a snowstorm over mm-hmm. here, like the end of the world was coming. I'm like, oh, it's not that, you know, come on, people, you're not going to be in your house for a week. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're a, I didn't say to them. You I was done, did you ever do stand up? Did did you do stand up? No. I should do a lot of things that I'm not doing. Let's just tell you. Know. <laughs> I've been told you should be, you should really get involved with the church because you really, i am really been really into that lately. You should really get into that. You could be a, a motivational speaker. I'm like, man, eh, I could do a lot of things. I, I should really, you know, do something here. Maybe make a combination of the two. <laughs> that would be pretty cool though, going around the country talking to people. That would be cool. You're going. You're going around the world right now on this on this recording, talking to around people. the world. Even better. All right. There you. All there right. You go. There you go. Beautiful. There you go. You boy. You got so You got some material. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I should be. There's a lot of things that I should do, but I'm not doing. I'm not doing it right now. But it's never too late. Hey. <laughs> You know, never too late. Uh, you know your per- your personality. Your personality just shines through. You know, oh. this is the positivity <laughs> and the personality that that we need in in the blindness community. You know, that's, um, that's what I've been told. I'm like, yeah, it's you know, it's true. Yeah, it's it's true. It's something you should be doing. It's probably one of those lot of things that you should be doing, but aren't doing. But it you is. Do. You, there you go. There you go. It is. But okay. But but okay. Here, really, really, I'm really gonna put. <laughs> I'm really gonna put you in the hot seat here. So let's, okay, let's, let's go, do it. Let's let's go back to the store. I mean, what was like when you were working there? Like, what was some of the crazy, like a really funny thing or a crazy thing that someone said to you while they were passing you through the line or you know going through the the checkout line or something really funny that happened? You know. Hmm. I mean, there was one guy I remember that worked. I think he worked there. He must have dementia or something wrong because he would always ask me the same stuff all the time. How's your, how's whoever in the family? I'm like, what's this guy talking about? I was nice about him. I'm like, oh, they're good. What am I going to say? The poor guy had issues. So I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I remember that stood out. Right. And there was always this old guy that would come every day and just hang out for hours because he had nothing else to do. <laughs> he was probably lonely at home, or, so which was fine. Yeah, just talk to everybody. I'm like, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's actually pretty common. That a lot of times when old people get get to that age and a lot of their friends die off, you know, they, yeah, they so go to probably, stores and that's yeah. that's quite common, you know. Mm-hmm. Probably felt you know lonely and you know that's okay. I don't mind that. I, I get it. Right. Everyone needs right. somebody. I, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. 
And then what happened in your life? So then you worked in the store for a while. And uh, then, and three and a half years. And then I'm like, I want to change. So I went you know, to the Commission for the Blind and I told them, you know, I needed help. So there's this, there was this law firm that I worked that they put a bunch of disabled people. I found that. But I was hesitant at first. I'm like, no, I want to get a job in the automotive fields. I still want to do to this day. Funny enough that I'm, all this other stuff that I should be doing too. But that's always been like a dream of mine. Yeah. So I, I fought them on that. They're like, no, no, you take this job. It's so I said, oh, I'll give it a shot. You never want, which I'm glad I did. So I was there like on the records department, helping with the attorneys or like uploading and uh, cases and things like that. So it was interesting. So I did that for almost eight years, I think. Mm, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then 2000, yeah, it was 2011. I started in 2018, right before Christmas. You know, they were playing off people for a number of months because they got caught doing some funny business. So the whole company doesn't exist anymore anyway. So I was closer to the end to get laid off. And there's another group after me in April or March of the following year. But so I haven't been working since then because I was starting to look for another job. COVID came. Yeah, and that was that. So yeah, I, that's why I haven't been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but I mean, I was I was in the gym till before COVID for like a, over a year. I went. I got a trainer. I said, I got. I always want to do this. So I was going like two, three times a week. And I was doing, you know, I, I finally got back into it recently, like a month ago. Mm-hmm. Finally. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, COVID messed up all of us. So, that you know. No, oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get out there and do a lot of walking every day right now. Mm-hmm. I was doing even the cold and the snow. I'm like, I'm doing it. <laughs> I see. I see. Well. I live in a part of the country where there's not any snow generally, but yeah, I grew up <clears throat> in a place where some years it would snow really hard. Uh-huh. <clears throat> you said you grew up in, in Massachusetts, right? Before? Or, no, no, no. Virginia. Or Ma- Maryland. A small... Maryland. Okay. I don't say, by the way, I don't say it on... It's a long story, but I don't give it out on online. But... Oh, okay. But, right. But anyway, though, some years it would snow really hard in my town there, and... Uh, these these past couple of years, I just haven't been able to do it, and I just couldn't take it anymore. So, basically, my it's a bit of a long story, but my parents were retired and they wanted to move to Florida, so we did it. Now we live in Florida, where everything is sunny and nice all the time. Well, I might be joining you there very soon. I don't know when, but sooner than later, because I I prefer the warm. Uh, how long have you been planning this, or did you just get this idea thirty seconds ago, or what? How long? No, no, no. My actually, I was talking to my mom about it the other day because oh, I was okay. like, either that okay. or Texas. I want to go. Well, okay, well, so let's let's talk about that. So, from a blindness perspective, here's a good question, a good topic for for anything. Mm-hmm. What what do you think, from your perspective, what should blind people consider when we move to a certain part of the country or not? Well, what do you think? My thing is, you're gonna have you can me. Personally, I don't like relying on. It's good to have people that they're there. God forbid you need them, but I want to be as independent as possible. Mm-hmm. So if there's no Uber or Lyft or a bus, it's not going to be good for me. I mean, that's the way I look at it. If you right. you have to rely on somebody all the time, that's not going to be good. It's not going to be good at all. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. going to find the places, even Florida or wherever it might be. Mm-hmm. It's going to be I could walk somewhere, and if I want to the stores to the restaurants and go, you know, meet people that way. If I can't, I got to rely on somebody that's not going to be good. Right. Mm-hmm. Like kind of where I am now, the only thing that's close to here is like the supermarkets. So it's, it's rough for me because I got to, I want to go meet people. So I'm trying to reach out to meet up groups and you name it, like anything I can. The church, right. you name it, to see there's groups. So I don't, you know, I don't want it to be like that because you know, where I grew up all my life, Long Island, Mm-hmm. It was more convenient. They had the buses, they had <clears throat> wasn't like this where I'm where I am now. So it's an adjustment. <laughs> right. Sure. 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 Transportation sure. is important. It's very yeah, important. And I mean I'm someone who never really grew up with that. So I never really got that. You know, I never fully came to an understanding of that. I agree with you. It is critical, but I just never grew up with it. So I never really, you know, un- fully understood it. Uh-huh. Well, like I was, you know, dating mm-hmm. a girl for a brief time in, in Texas last year. And where uh-huh. she is, I don't think they have Lyft or Uber. So I couldn't do it. It didn't work out. Because I'm like, I can't, I, if I got to rely on mm-hmm. somebody 
all the, which he's fine with that because he has good friends. But I was like, I can't do that to them. I don't know them like that. Or would I want to put that burden on anybody for me? Like, I want to go do something on my own. I want to be able to go sometimes. So mm-hmm. that's an issue. Mm-hmm. So it can't be like a small town that wouldn't do any good. Right. For me. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, that is a significant issue. Um, mm-hmm. I would say that is a pretty significant issue around the community. Yeah, yeah. So, and that, right. and and if you don't mind me asking, that girl that you were dating in Texas, what was she blind or sighted? She you knows she's she went blind six years ago, so it was all right. new. It's all new to her. All new to her. So, <laughs> I mean, I you know, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, she was in an accident, and it's the whole world changed. So you go from totally sighted to that; it's it's crazy. It's, it's I could imagine devastating. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's something that I struggle to understand. I mean, on one hand, I totally, you know, I totally get it that you know blindness is is a significant challenge. But yeah. I will say that I cannot understand what it must be like to lose vision later on. That must be really weird. That's that's your I, personally me. I, I think for, uh, if it were me, I'd never be this. You'll never be the same. Because it's just I guess you go not. from driving I, I guess and everything be to the like same. Mm-hmm. yeah, I can't do nothing anymore. I'm not that you can't do anything. You can't drive. You got to rely more on people. I mean, mm. it's it's got to be rough. I, I don't know. I see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be very, very rough. So you know, that's you know, you know, right? That's right. with that, but you know, I'm out there doing what I got to do, <laughs> trying. Well, that's that's a lot, you know. Just getting out there, getting onto podcasts and shows like this one, you know, that's a lot already, and that's a a tremendous step in the right direction you know that's what everyone tells me they go you go i said it's really for me it's not a big deal to do this because i I mean it's the only way you're going to potentially meet people or you never know who i listen to it yeah like oh i'm gonna talk to them you just never know okay but the other thing is you don't know how many other marcos are around the world who are we don't know (laughs) we don't know (laughs) who you never know (laughs) if there are any you gotta do some kind of you know some kind of thing getting out there and you know motivating and inspiring people and just talking to uplift the world that's what would be my thing to do well, and do it go. yeah um but really but yeah but really though there could be a lot of people that were in your position or in your position that you were in in the past you know they might be blind right and wondering should they work in a store you know, should they get out right. in the community? You know, you just sharing these simple stories to you, it's right. simple or simplistic or maybe not a big deal to you. Right. right. But to someone True. who's recently blind or just needs to hear it from someone else that could I mean, that could make their day. You don't know how many you don't know how happy. Oh, yeah. Made someone. Oh, yeah. And that's that's that makes me happy. I hope that's you know, I can make as many people in the same boat realize that you know we just we could do pretty much anything we want except mm. drive right now but um everything <clears throat> is possible it just takes time and mm-hmm. it's frustrating it's not easy there's you know everyone has their you know bad days of course you know we all do right we all do even me <laughs> right of course i do we i do we all too. do we, we all, all do. do absolutely we all do but but about but about driving so What is your, you know, your perception of blind people being able to drive, you know, in our lifetime? I mean, we're basically the same age. So yes, do you are. think we'll be driving in our lives at some point? What do I you think? think we have a shot because we're, we're, I think we do. Like people around our age, maybe a little older. I think we have a shot. Mm-hmm. I think we do. The way things are going, definitely the younger people, younger than us will definitely. But I think we do. Mm-hmm. I really think we do. Mm-hmm. I always say I want to be one of the first ones. You want to test person? I'll I'll do it. Just let me have the car for you know. Just give me the car. You know, I'll test it out. <laughs> you 
I'll be one of the first. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but are you sure you want to be the first? Oh, maybe not the first. Maybe you know, oh, okay. let a couple right. other people right. go first. Let, let, let someone let someone else let someone else get into an accident. Right? Not yes. Not, that's the concern yeah. that you know you think maybe not the first. Maybe you know. I don't know. Let a couple <clears> of people go first. Or got some bugs. Yeah. But yeah. But it definitely would would be cool. Mm -hmm, it would be really cool to mm -hmm. do. You know, Marco, it's going to surprise you to know that <clears throat> when I was growing up as as a teenager. When I came around the age of 16, I, you know, I didn't really have, I don't remember having any true interest in driving a car. Me neither. At that age, I don't think I did. No. Just never no. really occurred to me. And I think the reason why it didn't occur to me was because I was, I was born blind. Right. Right. No, I don't think I, I mean, more recently, I thought that would be cool. I could just go and. Or wherever I want without asking anybody or nothing. Just more recently, I thought about that. But when I was 16, no, I didn't care. I'm like, nope. no. <laughs> Good. Right. Right. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't care at that. Um, at, at that age. That age. No. That age. No. That age. Yeah, no. You wouldn't care, or, or really, or really. That's not something that <clears throat> is a significant issue. And to me, it's not really a big deal. You know. No, I mean, if, if it never happens in our lifetime, I'm okay with it because I'm used to the way we are, you know, getting or mm. finding a way mm. to get around. It's not, mm. it's not that big of a deal to me. Mm. Right. It would be all right. Mm -hmm. It might take us longer to get somewhere, but you know what? That's okay. Right. <clears throat> um, and that is a very, you know, significant factor that I've been hearing about a lot around around the community is that a lot of these people are... Blind people are, you know, struggling a lot just to get around their communities and things. So, yeah, see that I, I wouldn't want, you know, too much, you know. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, if I move somewhere, I got to make sure it's somewhat. I mean, it's not going to be ever perfect, but but just some some other alternative in case somebody can't drive you or you don't have, you know, anybody. You right, know, right. You're not stuck. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Sure. Sure. <clears throat> and what are some activities you have been doing, you know, in your in your free time? How how do you spend your time if you're not going out during the day? I mean, during the day, I start going to the gym twice a week. I go. Mm -hmm. I go there. Do a lot of walking outside. I started again with the, um, with the New York State the Commission for the Blind here next to the other day because I want to get some brush up on cooking skills and things because I don't know too much of that but I want said eventually I want to be 100% on my own which that's the goal here so I started that the other day finally because COVID I started doing it before COVID and then COVID came and finally I'm back at it again right right De definitely definitely okay so let's talk about the cooking classes so what are you learning in those cooking classes and they, they like basically they're like what do you like to eat and we'll show you, like, we're not going to teach you to cook some gourmet things. You're not going to make it. There's no point. I'm like, yeah, I agree. Because I'm pretty simple what I like to eat. Right. You know, I'm happy, you know, with frozen stuff or making some, boiling up some pasta or simple things. I'm nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. Maybe a simple salad, you know, things like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what specific dishes have they taught you how to prepare? At the um, mm -hmm. They just, right now we didn't start. This starts next week because um, we uh, they just marked everything because I wasn't marked here because I you know, moved here a number of months ago. So it's they the stove and the things are showing, they're going to show me a bit how to use it the other day. I'm like, okay. So that's all they did so far the, for you know the hour and a half they were here. It was a little two hours, whatever they were here. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. we got you know, just you know just got started on that. Finally. Right. So in other words, these the New York Commission they come to your to your home and teach. You? Yes. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. They, they will, will come to you. Don't worry. It's best you learn the, the environment where you live. So it's okay. It's fine. Right. It's fine with me. Right. Right. It's fine with me. Interesting. You know? Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know. So and they they know. Eventually, I'll, I'll be a. Uh, on my own, one hundred percent. But you know, I'm in the one step, one day at a time, one step at a time. Right, right. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm I personally am moving very quickly in that direction as well. So. All right. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I I do a lot of cooking, you know, combination of sh- buying ingredients, shopping, heating, perfect, yeah, whatever, somebody. you know. What, whatever works. Yeah. Ordering I mean, some I mix yeah. things around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could order mm-hmm. sometimes too. what and there's some people that like just frozen stuff and heat, which is fine if that's what you're comfortable doing. Right. It, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. right. Um, have you seen the, and I just, I, just a couple weeks ago, I interviewed the executive producer of the show. Have you seen the TV show or heard, listen to the podcast, Cooking Without Looking? I've heard of it. I've never listened to it though, no. Yeah. I'm going to have to download that now. I'm going to remember to to do that. Yeah, it's a pretty catchy title, Cooking Without Looking. Yeah, I just I like interviewed... That. It is. I just interviewed their um, their executive producer. Oh. Yeah. And uh, they, they put recipes and things on there? How's that? Well, you can look look it up, but... I'm going to, I'm going to do There's it. a blog and there's a page and, th- and things like that. Yeah. They I'm going to definitely look have, it up. They used to have like a full television show and then when COVID wow. came around, you know... Uh, everything kind of went online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'll have, I'll have to check that out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look for it after, just so I don't forget. I think that can learn. Who knows what I can learn from there? You just never know. You, you, never, you never know. You never know. You're a very, you know, you're a very open person. Where did you learn in life to be so open? Uh, I guess just on my own cause, because I'm big into listening to like YouTube videos and podcasts of like motivational stuff for how to improve, self improve. Maybe on my own, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't. Okay. Okay. I still. So, yeah. what are what are some things, some specific things that you have learned from watching these specific videos? What what are what are some examples of how you're using that content in your you know, I mean, day to day life. You know, I'm, I learned, you know, I've learned even, you know, recent months, I thought I was good at it, but I'm not like the communication with people is, is key. It's very right. important. Like you can't just assume they're going to know what you want or what you, what you, you know, what you need if you don't tell them or if there's an issue, they're not going to magically read your mind. So I've, I've learned that. That's the biggest thing. Right. That's right. the biggest thing for me. Yeah, people are you not right. People are not mind readers, definitely. No, definitely no, no, no. And I learned so much from just because I've never had a serious relationship to the last one. It was my first and serious one that I had. So I learned so much from that too. Like, you know, just not to let family get involved and all that. The things I, you don't know. No one tells you these things. You don't learn. There's like no book how to do it. So I learned so much just that with that alone too. I'm like, well, now I know for the future. <laughs> your your attitude is perfect. Your attitude is right. That's that's really good. It's a lesson. Really it's a lesson. That's what I have to call it. It's not a mistake. It's a, it's a lesson. Whatever mm. whatever works for you. Okay. Right. But the point is, your attitude is in, your mind is in the right place. Your attitude right. is your attitude is right, and that's right. really that is really 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 good. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, it is very it's very important. Very important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that's really that is really really excellent. Um, yeah. So, I mean, what are some um, what are some other specific things that you have uh, noticed about you know different ways of, of motivating yourself? You know, because I see a lot of this in the community where people are having a really hard time motivating themselves. So you seem pretty motivated. Um, why do you think so many other blind people in my estimation are struggling with motivation? What do you think? I mean, I, I think it's, it's, you know, when you get, when you're in like a state of depression or something, it's, it's hard to motivate because I went through that a couple of months back up until more recently, believe it or not. Like I was in myself for a while, like moving up here and just a bunch of things going on. So I, I was in probably the worst mental state ever in my life. That I'm like, I don't like this. So I, it was it was rough. Yeah, yeah. It was rough. 
Well, and you know, like, I, I don't me. think, and for the record, I don't think anyone is feeling perfectly nowadays. I, we all got, yeah. nobody, nobody is feeling 100% good right now. No. Nobody. No. Um, not oh, me. No. Not me. Not me. I'm not feeling 100% perfect every second. Definitely not. No, um, no, none of us. No. No. So what, in other words, you had to move back to New York from Texas? I, uh, I just had visited. I never actually moved there. I just was visiting. And I never actually moved there. I was going to move there. I had all this planned out. And I just never, you know, with uh, a whole bunch of things going on here, going on is what really messed, right, which I couldn't do it. It was just too much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. what screwed up everything because I had just so much going on in my life. Mm-hmm. Not only the relationship, just family, a bunch of personal stuff here. And I was like, I can't. You know, and I didn't handle that whole situation right. That was a learning experience for me. That's what, that's what it was. Right, right, right. right. So. <laughs> but, you know, until you, well, that you know what? You handle it gracefully, you know. Um, yeah. You know, so really, you're, you're a very, you're a very great, you have a very graceful and a very, just a very graceful way about moving <laughs> through life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not afraid to say, uh, I'll tell people I made a mistake. And if I hurt them, which is okay, uh, I'll tell them. I made a mistake. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I didn't do it. I did. You know, I'm, I'm good with that. And I'll admit, like, I messed hmm. up. You know, I'm sorry. And that's all you can do. Yeah, yeah. Because we're, well, we're that's human really, well, that's, well, that's a lot, though. That's you it saying is. that. That's a lot. And I think that people in the community need to hear this and really do need to learn from you about this. That's a huge thing that you're willing to do that a lot of people are not, is to accept, to have the strength within you to accept when you're wrong. It's, and, see, it's and, not, you know, wasn't easy, but after a while, you know, no. you just, you know, everyone's different. You just kind of, I'm like, I gotta accept this, you know, it happened. It's, you know, you're not perfect and move on because you're going to, if you sit stuck in the past, it's not going to do any good for anybody. Right, right. It's going to be very bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, De- definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah. if I could help anybody else out, they could always, you know, seriously, they could reach out to me. I don't mind. If oh, anybody okay. Okay, comes good. to you and says, you know, hey, I want to talk to him, that's that's fine. Well, we'll get to that at the end. But, oh, okay. but, okay. but well, no, that's fine. <laughs> but but that's really good that you're that you have this much confidence and that you you know you really believe uh, so heavily in in just. Just, just going about life, just going about your business, you know. And mm-hmm. hey, I don't. Yeah. And hey, I don't know much about you, but I, I've seen over the years. I've seen your lives on Facebook. You know, you love. Oh yeah, doing yes. lives. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that. Tell us about. You really enjoy doing lives and just hanging out with people. To talk about that for a bit. I really do. I'm, I haven't done one in a little while now. But I'll I do one. I'm not on. stopping you. <laughs> I usually go on Facebook and see how everyone's day was and. Whatever everyone wants to talk about, just just to interact people with yeah. with people. Yeah. Or you know, I haven't done that in a while either. I post videos of exercising and stuff and things. Mm. Which I want to get back into that again, which I will. And um, mm-hmm. just anything I enjoy, I, I want to try to make. I got to do more of now that things are you know okay. Right. Just make a video and just show people like if I can do this, you you do what what your makes you happy too. Mm. And it's just you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you could definitely do it one little step at a time. So I, I just love, you know, interacting whenever I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it feels mm-hmm. weird sometimes when I'm not. So I'm like, all right, this is a good or a bad thing. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, who knows? Who knows? But you brought up another idea. Have you thought about being a YouTuber who does exercise videos? No, but that's that's another all these all these awesome things that I could look at that because I do have a channel set up and I just haven't posted anything in a while in a little while. Well, let's get that set up. What are you waiting for? There's so many things that you there's so many things that you aren't doing but can be doing, and one I know. And well, if you know, then do it. (laughs) I gotta do it. I gotta seriously. I gotta really get now back into it. You could you could be. A YouTuber who happens to be blind, but you upload exercise and health content. Oh yeah, that's you know, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get back to do more of that. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And how would you go about recording yourself exercising? I mean, I use my phone for everything. 
Mm-hmm. If I'm doing 100% good job, who knows? But use the camera on the, I've done it with the phone before. Like mm-hmm. I put it on the stand that I have, like a little mm-hmm. stand, and try to angle it the best I can at me. And then so I don't have to hold the phone or try to do anything. That's how I usually do it. Right, right. But then the trick with that is then you have to make sure that people can see you, you know, yeah. working out. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it doesn't read the comments. You have to go look. For some reason, it won't read them. Like with the voiceover, you have to actually go look. And I'm like, well, I want to just read them so I know, you know. <laughs> mm. So I wonder someone else who does more live streaming uh, than we do. I wonder if someone else knows a little bit more about that. Um very well could be yeah, there might be something that we don't know that I don't know. Yeah, there probably is. Something. There I'm probably sure there is. is a trick to it. Mm-hmm. To get I'm your sure. voiceover to automatically read the comments. Um, I'm sure mm-hmm. there is. So if anybody knows, let yeah. us know. <laughs> let us know. Well, I tend when I do the lives that I I mean, I do it so infrequently. Okay. Because I actually think that people like to watch something pre-recorded and then they like to take it with them and watch it at their own pace. You know, I think. Yeah, that's, that's true. Probably more so than live because, you know, well, if they're... it depends. People will right. always watch live. But the question, the question then is, you know, you have to consider what group you're going live in, who are the people, you know, right. things like that. You know? Very true. That's all very true. So do you generally choose to go live with your friends or do you go into a group and just start a live in that group? Um, Usually I'll do it on like just with the, my friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I haven't really done it in a group, but I could as yeah. well. That's because mm-hmm. I'm part of some groups there. Many. You're, you're in many groups, I think, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I'm in quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. So what groups are we both in? I mean, I've been on and off in the blind lounge. I don't know if I met you from there. It's, it's been around for a while. Know. I, I mean, I know I've been in it. I've been, I mean, I don't go in the blind lounge, but I, I know of the group. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? There's another one, maybe visually impaired pals. I haven't been in it too long, maybe a couple of months. I'm in that one as well. And then I think legally blind fitness group is another one in this. Um, oh, okay. Well, I would definitely not be in the fitness group. But so, okay, so that's that's good to know that there's a visually impaired fitness group for other people who are, you know, caring about that. Of course, I take care of myself and care about my health, but I would not I would not say that I'm a a, you know, exercise fanatic, I guess. Mm hmm. I mean, I'm not perfect either with that. Like, I'll have sometimes I'll eat some stuff I'm not supposed to because I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, it's not every day. We right. live once, you know. <laughs> some chips won't hurt you once in a while. Definitely not. Definitely, they can't hurt. <laughs> Definitely no. <laughs> um, but that's that's really that's really good. And then, so uh, how long? I always like to ask at some points. You know, how long have you known of Aaron's opinion with before I contacted you? I think I saw something about it a while back. Like I know we were going to try to make a podcast for the longest time, right? Probably more than a year. I've heard about it. I know I've heard about it. Right. So right. it's been a while. Hmm. 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 Like maybe you posted something in some groups, or I don't remember. But it's, it's been a while. It's possible. It's yeah, been a while. I find you know I find that some of the groups are a lot more receptive. Um, to people posting things than than others, you know. Yes. After th- that's th- so. What is your? Let's talk about the philosophy of that because I think that the posting in groups it seems to be a point of contention in any group that I'm in. So have yes. you noticed that? What do you think? I mean, sometimes these moderators are too too much. You know, I'm like, just let. I mean, let people. As long as people aren't attacking each other or saying anything they shouldn't be saying to each other, you know, nasty comments, let them post. I mean, if somebody doesn't like it, just sc- keep scrolling. Don't, there's no need to comment and make a big thing of it. Just leave it alone. You yeah, know? yeah. I noticed well, that when some, I post things sometimes to some people... Extent, I, yeah. I agree to, to the most extent I, I would agree. Although, you know, sometimes these 
sometimes certain people around the groups can be hurtful or maybe even um, dangerous in some of the things that, that they're saying. So there does need to be sometimes there has to be some. yes. where a moderator needs to check up on the person. I remember, um, and luckily, and luckily the, the post was taken down. I just have to think how I'm going to phrase this. I'm probably sugarcoating it. It was probably a lot worse. I don't want to get into a big thing saying what it was, but um, well, actually, no, no. yeah, but, but basically someone in one of the groups, I forget where or who, honestly, I forget where it came from, but they said that they were going to hurt like a whole group of people or do something really bad. And, yes. I, and I never report posts, but that's a post that I, that I definitely turned it into the admin, you know, push the Oh, I would post. too. Yeah, I did. And they said, thank Aaron, thank you so much. You know, I already know about it. You know, they took the post down. It's not, luckily it wasn't true. It was just some guy that was bored or. Just oh, okay, you know, but you never know. You just you, never know. Like, the problem somebody... is you can't tell. That's the problem. You can't until it's too late. You can't tell. Yeah, right. So it's best to take it seriously, regardless. Oh, definitely. Mean, someone shouldn't be posting it, even if they're bored. It's something you just you don't do. You don't post. No, no, you definitely should not be posting that. But no, but people, I think, are not are not always aware. Of the consequence of a post, you know, they think right. that it's ignored. And in many cases, posts are ignored around social right. media. Most of them are. Yes. The evidence of that is that we, we have a very small yet loyal audience here at Aaron's Opinion. If everybody was watching all the podcasts, then it would be easy, you know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It yeah. would be. It would be. But it's it's not for that, you know, for that very reason. So that's why... With, you know, with social media, we as blind people need to be careful. We yes. as blind people also need to post and need to feel confident posting. We should also know when to not post. And then yes. moderators That's... and then moderators of pages and groups need to know, need to be able to tell when to step in. The problem is I would rather the moderator stepped in then not stepped in and had something really bad happen, you know? That's true. You know, it's kind of better that way. And I mean, it kind of steps on the freedom of speech thing. And I get that. And I agree with right. that. It does. Yeah, it does. But, but I'd rather, time. I'd rather keep people safe and have someone maybe take down a post once a year than not, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Cause if you're going to say something like the post thing you mentioned, or if you're going to attack someone else, cause they believe something different than you, that's, that should mm -hmm. be taken down. Yeah. Because there's no need like yeah. or, for that stuff. Or 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 it should be or it should be um uh reported. Um yes. and in some cases um posts on Facebook can be reported to the administration of Facebook itself. So there are ways Yes, of, I've seen I've done that uh, before. Yeah, yeah. So there are ways of basically appealing the case to the next judge on the ladder and, and right. moving it up the chain of command, basically. Right. There are ways of doing it. Um, I've never done that. I've done things similar, you know, not, all, not often though, because I find that people are pretty, people are a lot more careful now about posting than it yes. used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It definitely, it's gotten a lot, it's gotten, yeah, they're more careful than it used to be. Oh man, it's crazy. Yeah. It's the things people post. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> what is this? Well, and it's <laughs> like, the other thing too is sometimes people post things that they shouldn't be sharing with their friends, let alone right. the public. It's actually scarier. It's because if you post something to your friends, the friends know about the friends know you, but if you're posting right. to the public, the public doesn't care. So yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, that's right. So it's hard to say. I, I mean, here at Aaron's opinion as the administrator of my page on Facebook, Aaron's opinion, of course I post publicly as a page, but if I go on Facebook, on my profile, then sometimes I pick and choose. Sometimes I set it to friends for th basically any time that I share content that that is not belonging to me. I push friends because right. I it's not my business to make their content public. But if right. if it's my own thing that I know what I'm doing, if it's my own product, then I make it public. And I think that's a good way of telling the difference. You know between that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's how you should tell. So just think of it, Marco. Think of it this way. If it's if it belongs to Marco, if it's my, if it's yours, public. 
or friends. Right. But if it's something someone else, else, if it's someone else's, just friends. Because right. You that makes sense. Know, because it's kind of, it's not yours to make public. It's it's not your thing. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. One hundred percent right. Yeah. But then why don't people get that though? Then why right. do you see these posts that? Just the stuff that I, I sometimes it's things that I don't even care, like. Why? Why do I need to know that? Right, you mean? Right, you know. That's a good question. I don't know why people. What? Why well, I just do... wanted to know. I mean, I guess we'll probably get a lot of. I'm sure we'll get plenty of nasty comments below on Facebook or YouTube oh, or sure. Instagram. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some some crabby people, some nasty. No, nothing like a. Not too many. <laughs> just, just a couple nasty comments. Just a couple. You know, what were they going to be? I don't know. I don't know. But but maybe maybe someone would would explain to us the philosophy behind why we feel the need to share, when in fact we as people have gone through society for thousands of years. Let right. me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that most people for thousands of years have lived a life of of obscurity, poverty, and squalor. And for thousands yeah. of years, people have lived pretty horrible lives, right. with making no connection and having a horrible time doing whatever activity they do. And eventually they die. And that was life for thousands of years. Yeah, it was. it's only till now that we're living in this whatever we're living in, you know. I right. don't know. I, like, well, like, how does that sit in your stomach? What do you think about that? I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I really don't know. How, why, you know, thousands of years you said that, you know, was it, now it's an issue because of social media. Like everyone's got to post everything they're doing. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't just know. want to know why. I, know. I just want to figure out since there's so much data and money that's being made around social media. Oh yeah. And what it is is it's a it's a reflection on the reason why it's profitable is because it's a reflection on human behavior and predictable yes. behavior. Okay, I get that, but. I, I get that from a business perspective, but from a sociology perspective, individual mm -hmm. perspective, I don't know why the individual feels that they need to contribute to the global business of social media. Oh, what do you guys think? That's a good think? question. Yeah, what, but if you were to answer it, what, 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 what philosophy would you tell me? I mean, I guess they got to Hmm. They're bored and they feel like they can just contribute something just to how is they, you know. but here's the question, how is that truly contributing? If it's something that I don't know about, how is that a contribution to me? It really isn't. It's not. It's, it's not. not. There you go. And it's that's not. only that's only our opinion. I would say it's not. I would say if you're using social media to promote, you know, a podcast like this one or many other great ones around the ecosystem that are doing the right thing, like in my opinion, that's, mine that's fine. and yeah. many others, that's that's what we should share. That's yes. worth the share, in my opinion. We should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We definitely should share that stuff because anything that's positive and can help others, that, that should be shared. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, it's very important. Well, well, you're right. It is. It is very important. You're very right. Well, Marco, you know, so, you know, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, because the beauty of a strong conversation, me just asking that magical question, has led me to say that we're, we're actually coming towards the end. Not the end, but towards the end. Oh, Let's wow. See. Yeah, I know. It's scary. It goes fast. Uh, it goes by very quickly. We have just, just, about another, just about another five minutes or so. So I want to okay. take this. Okay, wow. To say, I, it's incredible. It's really weird how quickly the clock goes down. I know. Digging into the right question and digging into the meal, you know, wow. Right. <laughs> so here is the, some questions that I want to ask you now. So okay. what do you want to know about me? What do you want to know about Aaron Richmond, Aaron's opinion? What do you really want to know about me? Usually I ask it all the way at the end, but I'll ask it right now. If you could ask me only one question to make me sweat to see if I'm worth my salt as a podcaster, what do you want to know about me? I mean, how long have you been, how, has this podcast been going? Sure. How have you been doing it? It's been going for about two or three years, but only in, in the last couple of years. I've gotten this serious about it, you know, with the professional mm. microphone, the YouTube channel that go along right. with it. 
the private WhatsApp group, which you're going to join in a minute. So, awesome. you know, things like that. So it takes podcasting and creating material for other people takes a lot of concentration and time and interest. Right. You know, right. this is something that is interesting to me. This keeps my mind relaxed. Right. And I'm helping other people. So it's a yes, very, big time. it's a, well, 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 good. It's a very positive thing, but it takes practice to interview all these people and to reach out to people, right? To, to oh, yeah. maintain rapport over long periods of time where you eventually find a day and time that works. It does. It's a lot <laughs> harder than, it's a lot harder than you would think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Especially trying to get multiple, you know, have things lined up for a while that people. Yeah. Well, you it's, know. you know, you know what I find? I find that a lot of guests are like you. We talk a little bit, then we kind of forget about each other. Then we come back to, it. you know, we let it simmer and then we come back to it. And then we, you know, you can talk to a, a person for a long time before they actually are willing to, to come and, and get. True. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That it's is the main pretty, thing. It's a pretty significant thing. But the main thing is make it happen eventually. That's that's the big the big thing. Well, that's well, that's really that's really good. So, what are some other other questions that you've been dying to ask me? Hmm. That that was the biggest one that I could think of offhand right now. That was the big, honestly. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well. Well then. Um, so, Marco, if someone wants to to contact you, how would they go about doing that? Do you think, how do you like to be contacted? I mean, Facebook, I mean, okay. you can take a search for me. All right. Okay. Well, good. Well, I tell you what we can, we can do. We can put, I'll put your link in the, in the description and then people can just go to, go to that and learn more, learn more about you and, and things that sounds like good. that. Do that you sounds have... good. And if they want to message me and we'll, you know, that's well, fine. Well, well, fine. Do you have any final words before we leave the recording? Uh, nah, thank you for having me on. I enjoyed this. I really did. Well, right. Hold on. That was a great way to end. Thanks for having me on. I enjoyed it. I loved that ending. I loved recording I really, this. I really you. did. Well, well, I believe you. Well, thank you. You know, no that's problem. so good. It's so good to have a guest that's so appreciative. You're you're so appreciative, man. Well, you're always welcome here on Aaron's Opinion. Aaron's Anytime you want to do another in, you know, pot in interview, you just let me know. I'm down for it. <laughs> I'm down for it. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much. As we like to say, usually I say this in the outro on the podcast, but I find that I'm saying it more on, on the video. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Stay safe out there. And of course, as we say here at Aaron's Opinion, Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good day and help one person today help one million people tomorrow.